When will it be time to consider Kinlaw a bust? Whew. Okay, let's talk about Kinlaw. Um, so <laughs> I keep doing the same thing. Kinlaw misses a practice, and I say, man, this guy needs to come back and work. Otherwise, he's going to be a bust. And then the next day, he's back. And he doesn't do one-on-ones, but he's in there on 11-on-11s 11 working. And I'm like, nice. Good job, Kinlaw. And the next day, he gone. It's like, what is your deal? Can you not practice two days in a row? You're a second-year player. You're already managing this messed-up knee. What is the deal? I mean, he's been out there for a lot of camp. He's done a lot of the drills. He's had some work in 11-on-11s. He has taken zero reps in one-on-ones. And that's really where you show what you're made of as a pass rusher. It's where you can get some real good reps against good player and improve. Last year, he got dominated by Lake and Tomlinson almost every single time. This year, I was kind of hoping to see if he'd made some strides. And it didn't have to be all on day one. He could have shown improvement over a training camp, but he's never done it. And I don't think he will. I don't know what's up with him. It's hard to say, but it's interesting to look at the Niners past all of all their first round picks since John Lynch and Kyle Shane have gotten here. Okay. Trey Lance, great player. They don't want to play him. They're just going to keep him on the bench this year. Really seems really good. Uh, Javon Kinlaw, maybe a bust. Can't stay on the field. Nick Bosa, managing his second torn ACL. You know who else had torn well, it? Managing his second torn ACL. Let's leave it at that. Um, McGlinchey. Solomon Thomas. Those are their first round picks. Now, Trey Lance is great. Oh, also Brandon Ayuk. Let's give him some credit, too. The two guys on offense. The last two guys on offense. But, yo, Kinlaw, Bosa, where are you guys? I'm going to talk about Bosa in a minute. Bosa is very interesting to me. He's fascinating. One of the more interesting players in the league. His entire family. They're kind of like the Mannings of defense, if you think about it. Uh, C Valley Niner fan says, so basically when they started simulating real football and driving the ball, he took a step back. He's going to be playing with the twos next Saturday. So, um, no, I don't think he took a step back. I think he was playing with Tom Compton and Colton McKivitz and all the backup receivers and um, wasn't really allowed to use any of the stuff that he was shredding the defense with the last three days. And I think the Niners got the um, result they were expecting. So C Valley Niner fan, if you're rooting against Trey Lance, that's a, that's a, a peculiar position to take because that's your quarterback long term. He's having a good camp. You should be happy. There's like 25% of Niner fans who are real skeptical about any positive Lance news and really feel like despite the fact that the Niners made this move for him, that the it's it's Jimmy Garoppolo's team until further notice. And anything, any other disc, any other if it's talked about in any other way, it's disrespect. I don't know, man. I feel like Kyle Shanahan disrespected him the most by trading for Trey Lance. Like, that was the ultimate slap in the face. Not my interpretation of Jimmy Garoppolo's camp. Sea Valley Niner fan, if that is your real name. Ominous24 says, maybe the best thing the Niners can do is keep Jimmy and let him learn from Trey. <laughs> that might raise his trade value. Yeah. Here, watch Trey throw the ball really freaking hard. Now you do that. Watch Trey go through his progressions efficiently. Now you do that. Watch Trey transfer his weight when he throws. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why did I do that? Johnny says, Grant, Grant, I called it. Shanahan got tired of dealing with mobile quarterbacks in the division, destroying his defense. Fight, fire, fire your thoughts. I agree. He can't stop them. They make... Uh, they, they all seem to work out. They made the right call. They just didn't let the guy do the mobile stuff today. Trey says, can you explain how the Niners get better by trading Jimmy? I get it frees up money, but who is out there we can get if no team trades a player? Uh, look on Spot Track. There are a bunch of vets that you could get for $3, 4000000 million who would help. The Niners have no depth in the secondary. They're currently starting a journeyman named Tavon Wilson at strong safety. They, their top five defensive linemen are hurt. 
I mean, they don't need to be spending $27 million on a mediocre quarterback after they just mortgage the future for this uber talented quarterback who's crushing it in camp. You know, they could take that and get five players. They could get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo and get five players who would make the team better. Depth is important. This team has the most injuries of any team in football. The more good players, the better. You don't need 27 million on the bench, but that's just my personal feeling. I don't know. Maybe people feel differently. Seth says crazy theory, but next Saturday, I don't think they will use Lance as much as we think because of your same reasoning, Grant. What do you think? Yeah, I was expecting. I feel like what we saw today at Levi's is what we're going to see in training camp. A lot of Jimmy. And when Trey does play, it's going to be the most vanilla stuff you've ever seen. Because when Trey becomes the starter or even whenever Trey gets on the field as a starter or as a part-time quarterback this year, they want it to be shock and awe. They want it to be totally surprising and defense is not to know what to expect because it's going to be a lot of like, you know, just runs, tricky runs with the quarterback and some play action stuff off of that at first. So they want it to be a surprise. They're not going to show it in front of the fans. They're not going to show it in preseason. I agree. It might look kind of, um, you know, humble for Trey Lance in preseason. And they're going to try their best to make Jimmy look good. I just don't know if there's that much you can do. I don't know. When defenses know that they don't have to defend any honor anything beyond 15 yards or outside the numbers, they're just going to constrict them. That's why Jason Verrett is breaking up two or three pass, passes a day on Jimmy because he knows – he doesn't have to honor like half the route tree. I'm just saying. Well, what else we got? Jose says, just because. Thanks, Grant. Thank you for providing content. Listen to you all the time. Thank you very much, Jose. That was very generous of you. I appreciate it.